Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Pauline left her catering job to start a groceries business. Now, does your mom and boga make money? Let's find out. This is Founders Connect Africa. Hi, Pauline, how are you? Hi, Ken. Are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, yeah. You finish, you yeah I'm actually finishing up an order for someone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm delivering in a few. Okay. Yeah. Then we can talk. Yeah, we can All talk. Right. Let me finish up. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Pauline, for giving us this opportunity to talk to you. I can see you're already busy. It's a Monday here. It's a it's already busy. So let's um, let's start from the beginning, as I always say. Um, you were a caterer before the pandemic that happened. Yes. How did the transition come about? Uh, let's say after. Like when the president said that there's COVID and yeah. like, uh, curfew. There are no gatherings and all that. Yes. I am now to think fast. Yeah. Uh, I started first. I started online cooking classes. Then, like after two weeks, I felt like uh, it's not working. It was working fine, but it was taking just some little time from three to five. So maybe like uh, the whole of like the whole of the day I was at home. So I felt like I needed to do something that would keep me busy and keep also my staff busy. So now that is when I thought about the groceries. I just woke up one day. I got the travel permit, I went, sourced for the staff from Nakuru, I came, packed them in my house, uh, I posted on WhatsApp groups, tested WhatsApp groups, then people responded positively, people started buying, but uh, after like four days also I felt like uh, maybe I'm not reaching a bigger number because uh, they were spoiling, you know they're perishable. Yes. So now I just packed them in my car. I went and parked in uh, outside the estate, actually there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I parked there. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, like after five days, I think the neighbors felt like uh, I'm being, like I'm obstructing them or something. Yes. Them pushing me from that side. It was they, a miracle. Yeah, it was a miracle because it opened up my mind. Like I think I need a shop. So where do you um, shop your groceries from? Uh, for me, normally, now after making the shop, I advertise my shop, and people are like, uh, wow, that's a nice shop, wow, wow. You know, in the Facebook groups, eh? the yes. social media groups. Yes. So people are like, wow, you have a nice shop, can I be a supply of something? Can I supply you? Can I supply you? That is how I go to meet some suppliers. Mm -hmm. Other few things I get from Marikiti. There are a few things that you can't even buy maybe from suppliers. Yeah. So I just get from the Marikiti, the lorries that they come in the morning. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, with a good business, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Yes. Wow. yes. Yeah, you smile. You, like you can't go wrong. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Yeah. If, you're, if you actually do it the way it's supposed to be done. Yeah. yeah. Tell us how is it supposed to be done. How do you... Um, because what I have seen probably has... The major problem is the pricing. So, so sometimes the pricing from probably the farm to... There are a lot of middlemen inside the business. So there's a farm. There's now my, the, 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 the brokers yeah. and all that. I think, uh, number one, the brokers kill the business mm. because we find the farmer is selling something, maybe like a, a thousand, let's say like a thousand, but the broker won't sell that thing at 1,500. You can imagine now selling to the, to the consumers. It will be pricey, of course, because we'll have to... To adjust let's say, your prices. Yeah, and then you have to make like a, maybe like a something out of. Yeah. So you find that uh, maybe in Nairobi, mostly I think it's in Nairobi because in the where where in the villages you find that uh, like a sack of carrots it's very cheap, mm. but when it gets to Nairobi it's very expensive. So you can you someone who comes from where they grow carrots they don't even understand why it's that expensive. So now the like. The middlemen, the brokers, they, I can say they kill the business. Okay, that's where they eat, but at least they, there's a way that they kill business for between the consumers and the buyer. Even the farmer. The farmer gets something small compared to what they're supposed to get. Because you can imagine a farmer plants maybe like, a, let's say, 
just a produce and then the farmer does everything from fertilizer from everything from even uh, maybe like weeding harvesting and all that but he'll get just small amount compared to the broker so you see now the farmer is not happy let's say but now when personally i'm dealing with the farmer like uh, from the farm to the shop eh? it's a bit it's a bit reasonable and that is why now i find myself selling at a wholesale price at least maybe clients are able to buy because the prices are reasonable um so how much should you invest in this business uh when i was starting I'm telling you I didn't have an idea of this shop. Yeah. I didn't even think of a shop yes. thing. Never. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't in my mind. Mm. So I started with 70,000. Mm. I went to Nakuru to get the potatoes, uh, green peas, uh, carrots and cabbages with 40,000. Then when I came, mm. I added some 30,000. I went to Marikiti and get caught as some other small, small things. Mm. That is what basically I started with. So basically 100,000. It was 70. I didn't have 100,000. Oh, it's 40 and 30. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't have 100,000 yeah, yeah. plus fuel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's how it started until That now. is where I started. Mm -hmm. But now I can say maybe after I got the shop, mm. uh, I've used quite some money. Quite some money. Yeah, because yeah. of the buying uh, the shells, yeah. buying, making everything, I've, I've used quite some money. Um, so what is next for this shop? Are you planning to like open other shops um, going forward? Yeah, yeah, I am not stopping here. Like I've told you, there's money in agribusiness. I'm not stopping here. Maybe there, maybe there, was, there will be another Paldi in another estate, maybe in Kilimani, maybe in Lavington, in Karen, like where, whereby I can be able to move from Langata to with ease, or even Nairobi West, somewhere that I can be able to meet my clients, you know, like uh, to satisfy my clients. Because uh, I think I am not stopping here. Yeah. You're not stopping here. No. In this business to grow. Yeah, I'm here yeah. to stay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you've 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 said um, middlemen are, are, are such a big challenge in this yeah. sector. Yeah. Yeah. What else is um, a major challenge to your business? Uh, the fresh produce, you have to yeah. sell them fresh. Yeah. Otherwise, after a day or two, you can't sell. I do see a Mm. I have a children's home that I was uh, taking care of when I was in catering. So I continued with them even after the catering stopped. Mm. So like uh, when I when, when they stay maybe like uh, two, three days, like we can't sell to a client because our clients are strictly online. Mostly, workings are very few. So you can't imagine selling a client something that has stayed for two days. So I make sure that if I'm not selling here, I just send it to the children's home at least to save on the cost on my side because uh, fresh produce go bad easily. Yeah, that is a major, major challenge. Yeah. Okay. So when you say that walk-ins are very few yeah. and you do a lot of online uh, online uh, selling, how do you do it? Is it also via WhatsApp? And, uh, uh, I do via WhatsApp. Uh, like a Langata residence. I'm in, a group, I'm in so many groups, so I make sure that I post there once or twice per week to remind them that I'm selling these. I also do on my Facebook page, uh, Paldi Farm Fresh. I also do on my personal page, like I advertise what I'm selling. You see, when you don't advertise what you're selling, no one will know that you even do that. So I make sure that I advertise at least once or twice per week, and I'm able to meet clients that are, I've not met with my own eyes. They pay via M-Pesa, and I've served maybe like uh, over, over 20 or 30 clients that I've never seen throughout since when I started. Yeah. Like they order every week. Yeah. Oh my God, over 20 and over yes. 30. How many deliveries do you do in a day? In a day? Uh, let's say the, the least, we can do five, the least. The most, we can do even up to 20. Yeah. And that is out in Langata, not even in Langata. Yeah. In Langata, we don't even count them as deliveries <laughs> because it is just here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the main deliveries, because you, you're based in Langata, main deliveries are in, in Langata is free. Yeah. Deliveries in Langata is free. Yeah. But out in Langata, it's at a cost, just 200 but within Nairobi. Yeah. It, uh, maybe like if you go to Siokimau and that river, 
We just raise a little bit. Do, so do you get orders from there as well? Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> um, your, um, what would you tell someone who is at home, who is interested in entering into agribusiness? Uh, what would be your message to them? Uh, first, I have a mentoring group when I started this. I didn't see this coming. I have 50, that, 50 people that are mentoring, uh, both in the agribusiness and in uh, catering. I tell people, you don't need to wait for a shop. Maybe along the way, you can work from your house, uh, especially with the cereals. They don't go back easily. They don't go bad easily, I mean. Uh, maybe fresh produce is a bit tricky in the house. But if you're in a big estate yeah. and you have a smartphone, that's um, a business. That's a business already you're yeah. losing. Okay, yeah. So now we could um, actually go and have some juice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Thank you. When we were young, did you ever think you would be <laughs> doing this for for a living? No, I yeah. never saw this coming. Maybe I thought I'd be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, you uh -huh. can test it. It's oh, natural. You. It's natural. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, for them, I would really think about uh, uh, what's the next level. Because when you start in a very basic industry, where you're not adding any value whatsoever, then what it means is that once people see you being very successful, then they also want a piece of the action. And if uh, there's a concept in business we call barriers to entry, if the barriers of entry are not so high, if anybody could literally start getting the supplies and start competing with you, then you'll have a lot of challenges and then you start being pushed down on price. So for them I would begin to start thinking about what's the next level. We've already captured this captive market. They already love what it is that we do. You could go back to them and do surveys around, is there something more we can do? Can we start, um, you know, chopping up the groceries into specific shapes and sizes that are just the right portions for certain types of cooking? So that I don't have to do that at home. Can we start to uh, package ingredients that are excellent for certain types of cooking so that again I don't have to go and buy different sets of things and put them together. Can I start branding certain pre-cooked items? Can I, you know, because uh, you're looking at meeting the needs of these very busy people. Are there certain things I can do to make life easier for them? Because maybe they cook a certain, can I bring it pre-boiled? Can I bring it this? Can I start packaging some special things for maybe people who are sick? in a certain way and need certain ingredients. So I would really definitely think of what's the next level of convenience that I can bring to the people that I'm serving. Are there specific groups within the demographic I'm serving? Do they have babies and can I do some pre-mashed baby food or this, that and the other? Because if you don't move to the level where you're doing some value addition, then you find that people start to compete with you uh, on the basic products that you're doing. So, 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 so I would really think about value addition. Uh, if you travel to the West, you find that people have done a lot of pre-cut, pre-cooked things that I can just come and pick and go and cook directly or even ready to eat, maybe for bachelors and that kind of thing. Uh, so they must have some captive audience in the people that they serve who would not mind paying slightly extra, which can improve the profitability significantly as well. Uh, to get, you know, value-added products. You can always expand a business as long as demand outstrips the supply that you have or there's demand in other locations that you're not can currently serving and that, that demand is the same as what you're currently serving where you are. Um, so, so it would mean that there are other underserved areas outside of that. But you have to be very careful when it comes to expansion because expansion also puts a lot of pressure on your systems, on your capacity on money uh, because the more you expand the more you increase the scope of things that can go wrong as well so you have to have very 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 good systems and processes you probably have to have managers in the different locations who can be able to run end to end of the show and you also have to have systems that at the end of the day you can look and you're able to tell this is how our business is doing across the board 
that it's healthy. So probably automated systems where people put in certain information by the end of the day, or it collects that information through the day. And at the end of the day, you can be able to tell these are the sales I've done across the board. You also need systems that can be able to tell you what has gone wrong. If something goes wrong in one location, you need to be able to pick it up immediately so that you can, you know, either run and sort it out or you can, uh, you know, find a way of sorting it out before it becomes an even bigger problem. I've seen a lot of people who've expanded their businesses prematurely and ended up suffering because every business ends up being like a baby that is sapping energy and money and even your capacity. So you have to run and sort out something physically because you didn't build the capacity of the people to be able to run, run it in your absence or you have to take money from one branch to go and bail out another because you know it's not doing as well so you have to be very careful about you know the steps you take to to expand your business